Hey everyone, today we're going to be reviewing the MSR Wind Pro 2. Uh, this is a stove that I got a few years ago and I got it for a specific reason and that is for extreme winter camping. Uh, in most seasons and even some winter conditions, sure, um, you can get away with uh, your same stove you're using in the summer light, lighter weight stove options, uh, be it uh, jet boil, uh, a snow peak, your pocket rockets, your uh, Soto uh, stoves, uh, your BRS stoves, you know, all those lightweight options that uh, are real popular for a lot of people in the uh, summertime, and, you know, throughout the spring, summer, fall. Uh, people get away with using them in the winter all the time. Uh, one trick that uh, people employ to make them more effective in the winter time is they'll take their canister of fuel here and while they're setting up camp or whatnot. So if they're lucky, they'll have their in inside pocket like I do inside their jacket and uh, that one barely fits. Or they'll just, you know, zip it up in their jacket and kind of let the fuel can warm up a bit that way. And that's pretty important to uh, get your fuel canister to work uh, efficiently in sub-freezing cold temperatures. Uh, you want to keep it as warm as possible until you're ready to use it. And, uh, and that's all well and good, but when it really gets extreme cold, uh, down to the teens, single digits and, and beyond, uh, that's hard to keep this thing from getting too cold. So that is why I bought this MSR uh, Wind Pro 2 here. And what it consists of is it actually comes with a windscreen here. Set that to the side there. And then the stove itself, which is actually a remote canister stove. It's got uh, a little hose out here that extends out and the canister attaches there to the regulator uh, and the valve. And then the uh, tri-stand here folds out like so. It also comes with a little uh, canister uh, holder here, canister stand, and we'll talk about that more in a minute here. It also comes with a little foil platform for setting the stove base on, and that can help reflect uh, some of your heat back to your to your uh, stove, or your pot, sorry. And it also comes with a little uh, little tool here, and uh, that's just for maintenance on the stove here. I've never had to use it. Of course, I've only used the stove a handful of times uh, since I got it, but uh, I just keep that in there. Probably don't need to carry it out in the field with me, but uh, I just keep it all together. And then, of course, the stuff sack. And there are some instructions that come with a little uh, handbook, owner's manual, it comes with it, left that at home. And that all weighs about 10.9 ounces, or to round it up, 11 ounces for this whole kit. Which is actually kind of heavy, compared to, you know, more typical summertime options. Alright, now to set this stove up, I want to take your canister of fuel here, and this is a full can of fuel here. It's an 8.9 ounce canister here, and uh, I've, uh, I weighed it on my scale, it came out to 8.7, so I'm going to call that full. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just make sure you get a nice seal like you would any other canister stove here. Get that valve on. Make sure that the, the uh, valve is closed before you do that. Now once you have the uh, canister on, you have the option of putting this little uh, 
canister holder onto the valve here. The way this works is there's two little grooves here, or a groove on either side of the valve regulator. And this thing's got two little uh, hooks that clip on and snap into place here. If I can slide it on, there we go. And what that does is it allows the, the canisters to uh, invert upside down like so. Now why would you want to do that? Well, with this uh, specific stuff, it's designed this way because uh, these canisters, again, have a struggle to vaporize uh, their fuel in uh, extreme cold temperatures. And so what this does, it allows you to use it in a liquid mode, the liquid feed through the hose, uh, through the uh, valve here, and it will uh, feed out to the uh, burner here. And uh, there's a little ring that comes around over the burner that allows the flame to heat it up. Uh, and that's where the, the fuel will actually vaporize before it hits the, the port to uh, come out and burn. Now you don't want to start the stove in that mode right away. You actually want to start it normal with the canister upright and then let it go for about 30 seconds or so. That's when it should be safe to um, invert your fuel canister. So we're gonna try that out here uh, to demonstrate, see how that works. Um, but uh, to make it more worthwhile, I'm actually gonna load this pot up with fuel. It's about uh, 30 degrees out right now, a little bit below 30 actually, um, high 20s. And uh, we're gonna fill this one liter uh, Oli pot here. It's the uh, Oli Camp XTS pot. I'm gonna fill it up with snow and see how long uh, it takes to burn a approximately a liter of snow. And, and then we're gonna see how much water that turns into once all that snow's melted. So here we go. Light this up here. It's lit. All right, so we're looking at 146 minutes here. I'm gonna put the fuel on, or I'm gonna put the pot on at 147 and uh, start timing from there. On here, fire the fuel up a little harder there. All right, the pot is on now. Got a little snow melting out in the bottom of the pot there in the flux ring, so it's boiling out and steaming out. All right, so it's been a little over three minutes now, and this is how far the snow's gone down. Uh, it's just about melted down there, but uh, looks like it's barely gonna rise above eight ounces there. So not very much at all out of that one liter full of snow. Probably gonna have to shovel in a bit more to get me up to at least two cups is what I'm shooting for here. gonna invert this and just see what happens. So I've already got my flame pretty much maxed out right now. It's not very loud. So I'm gonna flip this over and just see what happens here. All 
Alright, sounds like it picked up a little bit. Alright, we've got a nice steam spout coming out now. We're about 159 minutes here, approaching 2 o'clock, so it's been going for about 13 minutes. And we are officially at a boil now. Turn this off. Alright, and despite the valve being off, you can hear the uh, fuel still vaporizing out. And there it goes. So, it's kind of cool. The uh, fuel in the line still has to vaporize out um, after, even after the valve is closed. So, all right. So, just came to a boil here, and I'd say it works pretty well. Um, so, I've used this a few times over the last few years. Uh, I don't go camping in extreme winter conditions very often, uh, but uh, in the times that I do go, which again, I've only been a few times since I bought this. Um, it's worked really well and I just wanted to do a little demonstration of it and a little review of some of its features and, and why I bought it. Um, it does run about $100 uh, typically, and, uh, but I think it's a great buy for um, someone who really wants a dependable stove that can handle the extreme winter conditions. I'll have to get back and weigh this fuel when I get back home, but uh, yeah, um, still feels pretty full, sounds pretty full, but uh, I did do the liquid mode on it for about a good 10 minutes or almost 10 minutes there uh, to boil out the snow. Of course, if you have liquid water uh, with you already, that'll boil down a little bit faster, I'm sure, by a few minutes, but uh, but yeah, I just wanted to see how quick it would do with the snow and came out to be about 13 minutes to get me uh, two cups of uh, water boiled uh, from pure snow here. And the snow is kind of packed down pretty good too, so it's, it's cold snow. So, um, yeah. So, that's my review guys. Uh, hope that was helpful. And... So that's the MSR Win Pro 2, and uh, I definitely recommend it um, if you want the uh, convenience of using a canister fuel in more extreme temperatures. Um, I'm not sure how low this could go, but uh, I'd say it's definitely safe down to single digit wet, uh, temperatures, it's, it can still be pretty effective. Uh, in fact, I have used it in single digit temperatures in my backyard uh, when testing it uh, shortly after first getting it. So, all right, everyone, see you on the next one.